So other day we were talking about real business cycle and new Keynesian models, and we have defined what three equation model is, uh, what new Keynesian model is, what uh, real business cycle model is. And these new Keynesian models, they're also called dynamic stochastic general equilibrium models. And there were certain criticisms of uh, these models. Now, one of the criticism is that uh, um, these DSG models, dynamic stochastic general equilibrium model, they assume that uh, people, they strongly change their consumption once interest rate is going to change. But the real world data shows that this evidence is not very strong. SNA, and then just because interest rate is changing, people are going to change their consumption a lot, right? So DSG models. Assume people strongly change consumption when rate of interest changes. But real world data. Shows that this reaction is small, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> then, if you look at New Keynesian Phillips curve, you'll find this that New Keynesian Phillips curve is telling you that. Uh, inflation depends mostly on the expected inflation, but that's not true. Inflation also depends upon past inflation, but you are saying it is mostly dependent upon uh, expected inflation. N.K. Phillips comes says. Inflation mostly depends upon expected inflation or expected future inflation or expected inflation, but uh, Evidence shows inflation depends upon uh, upon past inflation only, right? Uh, then uh, just just think about it. These dynamic stochastic general equilibrium models, these NK models, they are assuming that households are there, and these households are able to predict the complete path of the monetary policy. What is going to be the complete impact of this? But that's not true. Real people do not forecast detailed monetary policy, do they? Right. So PSG assumes. that households predict the future path of central bank policy. But real people do not forecast mm -hmm. 
detailed monetary policy. That's not true, right? <laughs> so in three equation model, business cycles, no, this is the another thing. We'll be talking about uh, uh, these three models again. Uh, so the nature of business cycles. The nature of business cycles. One. First one is in three equation model. See, first of all, business cycles are disequilibrium. In case whenever there is going to be a boom or a recession, uh, the economy will be off its stable path. Then central bank will have to do something to bring the economy back to its uh, stable path. Business cycles. Is equilibrium and a shock pushes the economy off its stable path. And the central bank is going to do something through its policy change so that economy can be brought back to its path. We will see how. As classes are going to go, steers it back. So while in RBC, and NK models. What is assumed is that all agents have, have rational expectations. So they're using all information which is available till that point of time. So even if there is going to be some change in the output, even if there is going to be some change in inflation, economy will still remain in the national expectations equilibrium. So don't they don't consider it as mistake so they are the optimal responses to shock. So once the shock is there, then people are going to respond. Economy will be again back to the rational expectations part. So all agents So this is just the introductory um, thing in which they have tried to tell you in theory what the chapter is going to be all about. So these points are going to be discussed in detail as you move on. <laughs> All agents have rational expectations. And uh, even if, even when, output and inflation move around the economy is still in Rational expectations, equilibrium. Hmm. And um, in real business cycle model,
So business cycles are arising because there is a technology shock. So wherever there is going to be a technology shock, there is going to be a business cycle. Uh, just say, for example, there is an AI which is coming. So it is it is uh, uh, creating boom in the economy, but it can also create uh, recession in the economy because many people are going to leave their jobs. But on the face of it, there is going to be a growth, right? So business cycles. arise from exogenous technology shocks. Changes in demand. So it changes in productivity. In fact, demand doesn't have a role here. So what RBC models, they tell you that um, it is not the changes in demand which is bringing about business cycles. It is the productivity changes which is bringing about business cycles. These shocks. are not caused by demand. Hmm. So RBC models rely upon what is called the intertemporal elasticity of labor supply. So when wages are going to rise, so when productivity is going to rise, wages are going to rise. So if the productivity of labor is going to rise, they can always demand more wages, right? And uh, workers chose to work more now because uh, they say that, fine, if we are going to work more, we can have better returns. But later on, when the productivity is going to fall, they will say, fine, we'll work less. So the employment is fluctuating because individual laborer, they are changing their labor supply decisions, not because demand is changing. RBC models rely upon Intertemporal elasticity of labor supply. So when productivity rises, wages rise, right? Workers, uh, they can choose to work more now because when their wages are rising, they say that fine, we'll work more because we're getting higher wages. And later on, when the productivity is going to fall, they will say we'll work less because now we are wages are going to fall. Choose to work more. take advantage of higher returns. Later when productivity falls, The workless. So what they tell is that the employment is changing because the optimal labor supply decisions are changing, not because demand is changing. So they are linking business cycles to the employment, to the productivity decisions, right? Not to the demand decisions. Because employment...
fluctuates. Because of optimal liver supply decisions. And not demand changes. So what these models have done, they have shifted focus to the supply side decisions, right? Uh, but the problem is that, uh, uh, I mean, how do you define technology shocks that is very vague? And uh, they assume that uh, there is going to be a persistence of these shocks, means these shocks will keep on coming, no. And uh, uh, this labor supply behavior doesn't seem to be very realistic. Sometimes at higher wages, you tend to work less also. So we'll stop here. We'll take the discussion further in the next class. Thank you. Bitte.